gets up on stage <laughs> and makes a comment on stage while I do this talk. So here they come. They can't walk very well. Oh, they're not there on the table yet. Maybe not the pets we're expecting to see. Perfect. All right. So let's just put snowflake over here and Harry's over there. Right. So I've created a job title for myself that hasn't really existed before. I studied international development, but still people are questioning my career choice as a fermentation expert, or as some may know me as a bacteria barista, says so on my business card, or still some others call me a bacteria dealer. <laughs> a large part of my job is to go around the world and meet different cultures who have cultures. <laughs> cultures who are culturing. I'm going to the next slide. I don't have the clicker. Thanks. Oops. So, in my fridge right now, among other bacteria, I have around eight varieties of yogurt cultures, all with their own tang, consistency, and properties. A lot of these cultures I've collected from the Omas and the Babas, sitting in their villages that are still doing fermentation at home. Often, sadly, these cultures die along with their owners who have kept them. So that brings me to the other part of my job where I take these cultures and I share them, the knowledge, the tradition, and the practices in forms of workshops, webinars, consultations, to all sorts of people, to foodies, to nutritionists, restaurant chefs, and barkeepers. There's no doubt to say that this theme of fermentation is highly in trend. Next to actually showing you some of my bacterial cultures, today I want to talk to you about the unique connection of our external and our internal culture today. About becoming a multi-multiculturalist, or a poly-multiculturalist, we have to find a word. When looking at the definition of culture, probably the most common one we think about is looking at people, at societies, their appreciation of and taste in different things such as fine arts, dance, music, lifestyle, and of course, food. A person is cultured by their appreciation of and their exposure to the world's diversity. Another definition of culture looks at the smaller, more intricate set of living material of these living communities, bacteria and microbes. Cultivating these bacterial microbes in order to give us different tastes in foods and drinks is also called culturing. When we look around the world, we can see this natural phenomenon of microbial cultivation happening everywhere. We can actually more often smell it and taste it. This is what we call fermentation. It's a natural process of yeasts, which are everywhere, they're flying in the air, they're on our skin, they're in our nose, in our armpits. Yeasts which eat sugar, creating bubbles. Or more scientifically said, yeasts eating sugar, creating carbon dioxide and alcohol. Here we have a picture of the traditional German sauerkraut, one of my favorite recipes of the cabbage being mixed up, those natural yeasts on cabbage, eating the natural sugars inside, and once they're put in their perfect environment, they're going to create a lot of bubbles. And these natural yeasts are flying around in the air all the time, they're on the skins of grapes, they're on the skins of ginger, they have been captured by humans and cultivated and tended to over generations to give us very, very specific tastes like our very famous wine, cheese, sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, on and on and on. 
and those ones you know and you probably appreciate and are probably eating a lot more fermented foods every day than we even know, even coffee and chocolate go through a fermentation process. But here I've brought some more intricate, special cultures to show to you today. Maybe you know some of them. We have here kombucha scoby, and we have a water kefir grains or scobies as well. And just for a little show, I brought you my ginger bug culture. It is what I would make traditionally in Jamaica, a traditional ginger beer. All that's in this bottle is three ingredients, yeast, sugar, and the bubbles. I mean, you see the ginger, yeast, sugar, and the bubbles, right? Here we go. So, there you go. I'm a professional, don't worry. Um, so, all that's in here is that ginger, that has natural yeast on the skins, there is sugar in there, and the water becomes the lubricant which marries the two, creating bubbles. I could do that every day, all day. And actually, <laughs> amazingly enough, this bottle here, you're seeing this, and you're like wondering how, may, how old that might be. It is actually four years old. I, I made it when I first moved to Berlin. And you look inside, and you actually cannot see which ones are four years old or which ones I put in yesterday because the natural process of fermentation has preserved these in there to be so they are. Pretty amazing. Oh. <laughs> That's why I brought these here and on stage with me. Such a good company. So I'm going to show you now some other bacterial cultures. They all look different. All of these microbial colonies are different in their own ways. And here we have water kefir grains. I'm going to open them up, I'm going to take them out and show you what they look like. They look very different. I don't know if you can see the camera there. They're like these beautiful crystals. And these little crystals are made up of bacteria and yeast. The natural process of bacteria and yeast have come together in the perfect environment to start growing in different forms. And in the case of water kefir grains, they're beautiful crystals, and they double, and quadruple, and octuple. And they want a little bit of food. I have some sugar here. I'm going to give them a little bit of feeding on stage. They're also a bit nervous. So, you know, the <laughs> sugar doesn't help. It can help a little bit. All right. You can put the, them in for the little feeding. Thank you. Great. So, and now I want to show you what happens when, when these different communities are put in their perfect environments, they will thrive and multiply. The perfect environment for a kombucha scoby, I'm going to say, what is a scoby? I didn't tell you what a scoby was, but it means symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. S-C-O-B-Y, symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. And like I said, that means these two, the bacteria and yeast, came together to start growing in this special uh, shape that it does and we're going to witness on this TED Talks today the first birth. Alright, are you ready for this? <laughs> so, this is a kombucha scoby and it looks crazy, right? It looks just insane. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. We also call it a mother because it has babies. I think we're actually having twins today. <laughs> All right, so here's one. Now we're having two. All right, there's three. Oh, triplets. And we can even keep peeling these apart and have more and more and more. I play with these every day, guys. I mean, this is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. It's really beautiful, I find. You can do all sorts of different things with it. You're not actually eating this. You're drinking the liquid from it. That is called kombucha. This is called the scoby. And believe it or not, I've grown one that's like 85 kilo. So as long as it's in its perfect environment, it will grow, thrive, and multiply. And this recent upswing in fermentation, in my opinion, is not only because of these crazy cultures and the unique, complex tastes they bring. You might even be able to smell the smell that it has. It's sort of like the apple cider vinegar. The other reason I believe that fermentation has become so popular is because science is starting to look at what it means to eat these or drink these living cultures. Because we too, internally, have a fermentation vessel that functions at its best when it's highly diverse with culture. 
the more good bacteria we have in our microbiome, the better we're able to fight off the bad bacteria and thus stay healthy. So eating or drinking a lot of these cultured foods has something to offer, to enrich, to diversify, and thus make us strengthen our microbiome and ourselves. However, when looking in the store shelves, we don't often see a lot of these varieties of things that are living and alive. A lot of them are pasteurized, preserved by chemical preservatives. To stop this constant evolution, because you don't want to find one of those in your bottles usually, right? <laughs> <laughs> Foods that are pasteurized, that are preserved by chemical preservatives, are very civilized. <laughs> but they're not very diverse when it comes to beneficial bacterial communities. So science is starting to reevaluate what it means to eat these culture foods, these living foods. We also may know them as probiotic foods. However, a lot of these cultures, even though they're being dying, they've been dying out over generations, we are now living in an era of accumulated knowledge and knowledge exchange. More than ever before do we know about fermentation and these traditions and these techniques and practices. It's amazing that we can take all of this information. We are here in Germany, and now we know what kimchi is. 100 years ago, we probably didn't have it here at all. With all this open source information, we are able to understand the best techniques to get the best results and continue spreading this knowledge. We also have a bad, a bad perception of bacteria, because actually only one to three percent of all bacteria is bad, whereas the rest, the 97 to 99%, is actually good or harmless, right? As we become more diverse in our microbiome with these foods and drinks, we become a living, walking, bacterial multiculturalist that has been imbued by the properties of our rich diet. It is a unique connection of our external cultural environment with the traditions and these practices that enrich our internal cultural environment and thus again ourselves. <clears throat> so culture is in us and it's on us and it's around us and the more we can understand this unique connection, the more we can share, appreciate and benefit from it. Thank us. Thank you. <laughs>